What are some of the benefits and challenges of DevOps? This is a very common question in interviews and this comes up in real world projects as well. Uh, so I'm gonna go over the benefits briefly and then I'm gonna go over challenges in two distinct areas. Number one, specific challenges of DevOps itself and second, challenges of a specific DevOps tool. So interviewer asks you this question to see if you have actually do some hands-on on actual DevOps tools. As always, just saying the challenge is not enough. If you say a challenge, you also have to tell the interviewer how you solved it. With that, let's get started. So benefits a little easier, challenges a little tricky, but I'll go over the benefits first. Uh, so when it comes to benefits, there are two big areas. One is the technical benefit, next is cultural benefits. Technical benefits is faster software delivery, faster problem remediation, easier to replicate best practices. So basically, if you have a DevOps tool chain with all the security best practices built in, and then you want to replicate this to another region or another environment such as staging, dev, test, another production environment, super easy. You will have a pipeline as code, infrastructure as code. You can just rerun it, point it to the new environment. That's it, everything is good. All the best practices gets replicated. And since all of this stuff is automated with DevOps, there is more time to innovate rather than fixing and maintaining. Some of the cultural benefits, now that developers and the operation folks are uh, working together in the DevOps model, improve communication and collaboration. In some cases, the same person will learn both the development as well as operations. There are a lot of cool DevOps tools. So once you learn that, there are greater professional opportunities and it leads to more happier, productive teams. Uh, and if you can mention this metric in your interview, interviewer will be super impressed. So you could mention that there is a study that Puppet has run uh, on the organization who has adopted DevOps versus non-DevOps organizations. And DevOps organization have 4X lower change failure rate, 24 times faster recovery times, 200 times more frequent deployments, and 44% more time spent on new features and code. Uh, so obviously it's very difficult to remember all these numbers in your interview, uh, but you could say that uh, DevOps organizations have faster recovery time and 200 times more frequent deployments. And regarding frequent deployments, you can mention one of these examples. So Amazon, yeah, you go Amazon, uh, the code is deployed every 11.7 seconds. Coca-Cola deployed delivery times, reduced delivery times from hours to minutes. Netflix code deployed thousand times per day. So I'm a little biased for Amazon, so you can you can uh, mention the Amazon example. Now let's go over the DevOps challenges. So one of the big challenges DevOps is you need to continuously adapt to changing landscape. Uh, there are new tools coming out every week and you should name some of these tools. Uh, on the DevOps tool chain itself, there is Jenkins, there is GitLab, there is AWS code pipelines, Pinnacle, etc. There are new processes and technologies. So very difficult to keep on learning all these new tools. Second challenge is since in DevOps model, uh, the same person will be doing development as well as production support. Sometimes developers are unwilling to provide support because developers sometimes want to do cool stuff. But then when it comes to production issue, uh, it might be a little challenging. And since DevOps requires cultural change, you know, in theory, it says yes, the same group is doing developer operations, but in reality, big organizations have these big groups, developer group, operation group. So who takes over the group? There could be some political fighting, cultural changes, so it takes months and years to ramp up. And finally, this one is true. We humans sometimes are resistant to change. This changes a lot in the technical process as well as the cultural process, uh, so there will be resistance. So generally in interviews, whenever you mention a challenge, interviewer will ask, okay, can you tell me how do you solve a particular challenge? So that kind of shows that actually you have done some of it and not just saying the challenge. So regarding continuously adapt to changing landscape, you could say that uh, we have a cloud center of excellence who goes and evaluates the tools instead of everyone uh, going crazy. And then they established standard tool sets. You could give an example that for my organization, we decided to go with CloudFormation as infrastructure as code and Jenkins as our DevOps tool chain. And that's what we use. 
and the Cloud Center of Excellence provides template with best practices built in. So if a new project comes in, uh, they can just copy over the Jenkins file as well as the CloudFormation and get started rather than starting from scratch. Uh, developers are unwilling to provide support. So you could say that your project has deployed some rotation criteria so that uh, not one person is doing support for multiple weeks. You get extra incentives uh, when you are supporting takes months and years, so you could say that we utilized a third-party training partners. We did workshops uh, to train ourselves in those tools that we decided on uh, and for the resistance to change. Really not an easy answer because technical changes are easier, uh, but we humans are complex, right? Um, so you could say we went through cultural training as we are going through the cultural change. At the same time, the third-party technical training, we realized that if I learn DevOps, it's not just good for this project and this company, it really opens up a lot of doors for my career. And then I was open to the change because if I learned these new DevOps tools, DevOps methodologies, down the line, I can get a high paying job. All right, now let's talk about a challenge you faced with the DevOps tool. So you could say that uh, you are using uh, Jenkins to run your pipelines. And some of the challenges you faced are, a scaling challenge, like if a bunch of jobs got submitted at one time, uh, since Jenkins run in a virtual machine like EC2, it takes some time to scale up. Second is idle cost. Even though no Jenkins jobs are being submitted, you always have to run the Jenkins uh, master. Uh, it takes uh, some cost. Third is steep learning curve. Jenkins has a lot of stuff going on. Uh, fourth, it was hard to troubleshoot. And uh, number fifth, uh, maybe you use some Jenkins uh, plugins and you were using it a lot, but then that plugin became out of date and there was some security vulnerabilities. So then you could not use that plugin and that pipeline was disrupted. As always, you have to set a solution. So I've divided the solution in two parts, depending on the interview as well as your knowledge. Uh, so one solution is if you want to, if the company is using cloud native, if you know that, you could say that you have used AWS code pipeline for recent projects. And also you can say you have optimized Jenkins. So you can pick and choose based on your interview. So code pipeline is AWS's native uh, DevOps tool. Uh, it scales automatically and it's pay as you go model. So if there are no um, pipeline that's being submitted, you don't pay anything. And uh, even if a bunch of jobs got submitted at one time, AWS will scale it uh, real fast so that there is no disruption and you'll only pay for the price when it's scaled up. And once the jobs are done, it will scale down to zero and you are not going to pay anything. A third advantage is uh, code pipeline is AWS native service. Uh, so whatever you know about AWS, so for monitoring, logging, CloudWatch, CloudTrail, uh, you can reuse all that knowledge with code pipeline. And it integrates with AWS services like IAM, using IAM, uh, you could specify who can submit what job, which team can do what. Another popular example is AWS Lambda is integrated with code pipeline. So if you need to go check something, do something, to run some tests, you can do that from code pipeline. It's not always possible to migrate from Jenkins to code pipeline. Jenkins is still the most popular DevOps tool out there. Little plug, I do have a best-selling uh, Jenkins DevOps course. Even if you don't know anything about DevOps, uh, this course teaches you the basics of infrastructure as code, Git, GitHub, uh, Linux, etc., and then teaches you Jenkins in detail. Uh, but anyway, uh, going back to the optimizing Jenkins, so you could say that uh, you migrated Jenkins from running on EC2 to running on Fargate. Fargate is a little bit better performant and you tuned Fargate CPU and memory based on CloudWatch container insights. Uh, so with Jenkins, you cannot reduce the cost to zero, even if no jobs are running. Uh, but with Fargate, uh, you can select a smaller CPU memory, and then as more jobs get submitted, it will scale up the Fargate. So it's kind of pay as you go, uh, better than what you're doing now if you're running on EC2. Uh, upskill on Jenkins, you could say that you have a study group for like a 10 week study group where you selected some course or some material with some hands on uh, practice. Uh, and then you went through that. 
and then you upskill yourself and that also helps you troubleshoot some of the Jenkins issues. And the last one is you could say that you created plugins based on your requirements. Can you think of other challenge with a DevOps tool or DevOps? If yes, feel free to put in the comment and I will go check it out and give you a feedback. If you are interested in learning DevOps, check out this free YouTube video where I go over DevOps basic concepts, some workflows, as well as some uh, critical hands-on demos.